Welcome back. This is the next in our short series on chain uh, variations of the bubble sort. The bubble sort is a very simple program. So by looking at how it can be adapted in different ways, we're learning something about variations on sort routines. In this lesson, we'll specifically look at the difference between an iterative sort procedure or function and a recursive sort procedure or function. We'll review the variations that we've learned and we'll finish with a programming activity where you'll write some of these variants of the bubble sort. Here's the iterative bubble sort. Uh, as you can see, this is a function, it's a sort function. You should have written this and you should recognize the different parts of the, of the program. Remember that any algorithm that can be created using iteration can also be done using recursion. So we're going to do that now. The recursive bubble sort, we'll build it in these stages. We'll create the base case. We'll insert the correct parameters into the header. We'll write the line, the recursive line at the bottom of the program, and then we'll just fill in all the other lines that come in between. So let's start to build this recursive function, starting with the base case. In the iterative function, we use a while loop to repeat the, to repeat the algorithm and the while loop will continue while a boolean variable called swaps is true. Now think about what you know about recursion. How are we going to turn this into a base case? I'm going to show you in a sec, so pause the video and start writing this function. The base case tells you the condition that will stop the recursion. So it's the opposite of the while loop. So we uh, iteratively, we repeat while swaps is true, but using recursion will stop when swaps is false. So if swaps is false, we'll return the list to the main program because the sort will be over. So that's that's our core, that's our base case. Now we have to put that inside a function with parameters. What are the parameters that we need? Well, we need to send the list because that's what's going to be sorted. And we need to send the swaps. We need to send uh, the Boolean parameter swaps, which is either true or false, because that's what's going to stop the recursion. So we've started to build the bubble sort recursive function. It's called bubble. It's got two parameters, my list, the list that's going to be uh, swap, sorted and swaps, which is the Boolean variable. And when swaps is false, that's the base case and the and the procedure will stop. <clears throat> the final line of the function is going to be the recursion. So uh, that's quite easy to write because we already know what the parameters have to be. So let's add that line. We're going to return the name of the function because it's recursion. We always return the name of the function with the two parameters that we've already chosen. So we've done most of the hard work now. We've created the base case, we've created the recursive line, and we've returned the two parameters that we need. Now we have to just write the rest of the program. And those are all the lines that we've already written, which traverse the list and do the swaps and change the value of the swaps variable. So just we don't need to change those lines at all. We can just copy and paste them into our recursive function. So I'm, I'm going to show you that in a second or two. There it is, there's the complete function. I just put, copied and pasted all the code from my um, old 
function into the new function. So there it is. There's the complete recursive bubble sort. If you haven't got that working, then you can simply copy this code. So let's just summarize the recursive bubble sort. The header must send the list or array and the swap value as parameters. The base case is when swap is false, that no swaps have happened. The other commands to traverse and swap we just copied across. And then the recursive line return plus the function name plus the parameters gives you the recursive line of the program. There are, but we've learned a lot of different variations. So we can combine the different variants that we've learned. So we could have an iterative function or an iterative procedure or a recursive function or a recursive procedure. So all of those variations are legitimate versions of the bubble sort. And we've learned a lot of different variants. Different programmers will choose different ways of writing the bubble sort and sometimes different programming languages will make some of these versions easier to use than others. So I'm just leaving you with the task of writing the recursive bubble sort and you can you can simply copy the code that I've shown you here or write it for yourself. So to recap we've over the last two or three lessons, we've learned different ways of writing the bubble sort, obviously as a program, as a, an iterative or recursive procedure or function. If you're my student, I've provided you with a long list with thousands of items in it called town list and try carrying out a bubble sort on town list and work out how many operations it takes. So if, how would you work out the number of operations and print that out? So I'm leaving you with that challenge. OK, so in the next lesson, we'll we kind of start learning about a new type of sort. So we've done quite a lot on the bubble sort. So next lesson we're going to learn about a new sort called the insertion sort. So bye for now.